Wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, everybody. Thank you all for coming to achieving greater success in becoming a geothermal HVAC contractor. I'll be introducing myself in a moment, but uh, I'd like to start with our esteemed panel. So first of all, we have Wendy McPherson. Wendy is the Assistant Director of Clean Heating and Cooling for the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, or NYSERDA. She leads New York State's efforts to develop markets that support renewable, high efficiency, and clean thermal systems, including air source, ground source, and water source heat pumps. She is charged with conceptualizing and driving strategies to advance building electrification within New York State. Second up is gonna be Steve Coulter of Con Edison. Steve is the clean heat program manager at Con Edison, and he coordinates statewide with all the utilities in the New York State clean heat programs. Steve implements Con Ed's heat pump initiatives, including helping utility customers save energy and money with clean heating and cooling. Steve recently worked with Con Ed's non-wire solutions team where he developed customer-sided solutions to reduce electric peak demand on constrained areas of the distribution grid as alternatives to traditional utility capital projects. Prior to working at Con Ed, Steve was passionately engaged in a range of clean energy initiatives in previous roles at Southern California Edison and the Los Angeles Business Council Institute. Our lead spokesperson today is going to speak from a contractor's perspective, and that's Mike Seidenberg, the owner of Eco Energy in Rochester, New York. And 14 years ago, Mike left his job as a heating, ventilation, and air conditioning technician to start his own HVAC company, specifically specializing in geothermal heat pumps. And Mike has also graciously brought along his daughter, Maggie Seidenberg, who is a Building Performance Institute building analyst and the owner of her own company, Energy Vanna LLC. And Maggie grew up around the HVAC industry under the wing of her dad. She was never a stranger to the changing tides of energy efficiency. And after intending to study biochemistry as a possible energy source, she came to the realization that the very root of energy efficiency lies with the user. So her goal and her success is helping New York State homeowners make a lasting impact that promotes a greener future and a greener pocket. And with that, those are going to be our four panelists. I'm your host, Ron Kamen. And to give you a sense, folks, one thing I want to make really clear and that you should keep in mind as you're dealing with any of this is you're going to hear a lot about greenhouse gases and what's driving the state and utilities is the reduction of those greenhouse gases, specifically greenhouse gases. The majority come from energy, from electricity, heating and cooling for our buildings and transportation. But when you think about those greenhouse gases, one thing you should really keep in mind is that it's directly correlated to money. We spend over $61 billion a year in energy in New York State. Most of that money goes out of the state. These technologies let us keep this money in the state. And this is the most massive transformation of the energy industry in our lifetimes. And in particular, in the HVAC industry, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to take advantage of a change that we haven't seen since we moved from coal and wood to other fossil fuels for heating and cooling. My name is Ron Kamen, I'm your host today. I've got 30 years experience dealing with clean energy. I dealt with solar in the energy industry and helped set up those programs that help make solar a success in the state. I've worked a lot to help my clients gain national recognition from the Environmental Protection Agency and others. I'm associated with various different business councils around the state and around the country. And I've worked with a lot of different kinds of clients over the years, saved people a lot of money with clean energy technologies. I've worked with private sector, the public sector, municipal government, nonprofits, et cetera. Some of these names you may recognize, but this to me is one of the most exciting times that I've seen in my lifetime where we can actually make a tremendous difference, have a very positive impact and simultaneously create new businesses and new jobs and take advantage of these tremendous opportunities. And with that, um, I just wanna say that today, we're looking at incentives and whether you're in the solar sector with the incentives there or the heating and cooling sector, which we're gonna focus on today with $680 million of state incentives plus additional incentives or in the transportation sector, New York State is tremendously committed to making this transition. And in addition to those grants, there are also tax credits, low interest financing and the ability to offer energy as a service, which we probably won't talk about today, but can talk about it at another time. But one thing to keep in mind is just as we're seeing now in New York City, where these carbon goals start out as incentivized programs, 
but will move into penalties if people don't hit those goals over the long term. In New York City in 2024, if you don't start hitting your greenhouse gas goals for larger buildings, there are significant penalties that come up. And in New York State, we have something that Wendy's going to talk about, the New York Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. Right now, it's helped driving a lot of these incentive programs. But eventually, with carbon emission limits, we're probably going to see penalties and the standards change. So with that, I'd like to introduce Wendy McPherson of NYSERDA. Wendy, if you would, thank you so much. Thank you, Ron. And good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, given the topic at hand for this web class and the practical content to be shared later in the class, I'll take just a few minutes to highlight the New York State climate goals that are driving the advancement of building electrification through clean heating and cooling. Next slide, please. New York's nation leading climate and energy uh, goals are set out by the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, also known as the Climate Act. It says it lays out uh, the plan for carbon neutrality for New York State. These are truly aggressive goals that have been codified into law. They are the most aggressive greenhouse gas reduction goals in any major economy, a reduction of 40% by 2030 and 85% by 2050. In addition, it requires commitments to environmental justice and to a just transition. 35% of the benefits from clean energy investments must go to disadvantaged communities under the Climate Act. Next slide, please. All of the goals on this slide are in pursuit of this ultimate Climate Act goal of 85% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. The Climate Act requires significant shifts in business as usual. Reaching 100% zero emissions by 2040, which really is just around the corner, will mean a new portfolio of resources that provide electric energy to the grid. We're just now beginning the stage of integrating the amounts of new renewable energy required to meet the projected growth in the state load, particularly due to electrification activities in transportation and in buildings. Through the Climate Action Council's work, we're seeing, <clears throat> excuse me, we're seeing recommendations for significant reliance on future electrification technologies, such as heat pumps and electric vehicles. And no doubt we will be scaling these up in New York State as we also watch them grow nationally. While the Climate Action Council process plays out, New York has not been idle. We have moved swiftly to implement major clean energy initiatives and programs toward our current 2025 goals. New York State Clean Heat is one of those programs. You'll see on this slide that the current New York State energy efficiency goal for 2025 is 185 terabtu. New York State Clean Heat is expected to deliver four TBTU toward that goal. Next slide, please. So why are we so focused on heating and cooling? Building decarbonization is a critical piece to the climate puzzle and potentially one of the most challenging. Contributing up to one third of, ec of economy-wide greenhouse gas emissions in New York State and an even greater percentage in New York City. Most of these are older buildings and are not designed to be efficient and they will all need to be upgraded uh, to reach our climate goals. Next slide, please. There are 62 million buildings in New York State. 4.9 of these buildings are single family homes. To put this challenge into perspective, we need to decarbonize on the order of 200,000 buildings a year, every year from now until mid-century. That's 500 buildings per day over the next 30 years that need to have a heat pump installed. Have I gotten your attention? There is no way New York State is going to meet these decarbonization goals with the current workforce installing heat pumps at the current pace. We need public and private sector working together to drive this significant change. Next slide, please. One of the initiatives to advance the building electrification effort in is New York State Clean Heat. This is a two-pronged initiative that was launched in 2020 and is currently funded through 2025. 
The utilities have $454 million to run the New York State Clean Heat Incentive Program, which provides incentives for installation of heat pumps for space and water heating. And NYSERDA has $230 million to invest in multiple market development activities to ensure the success of the utility-led incentive program. Steve Calter with us today will be speaking in just a few minutes about the specifics of the New York State Clean Heat Incentive Program. Next slide. The goal of the NYSERDA's $230 million of New York State Clean Heat Incentive um, money is market transformation. The critical areas of effort are noted on this slide. Building consumer demand to increase awareness of and to promote the benefits of heat pumps supporting innovation of clean heating and cooling technologies to spur technology advancements, building demonstrations and to drive commercialization of new systems and technologies for all building types, getting homes heat pump ready by developing and promoting building electrification packages for consumers to ensure right sizing of the home and getting it ready for heat pump installation, uh, building the clean energy supply chain to ensure the products are available when and where they're needed, providing added attention to low to moderate income households to ensure that that population, which makes up a significant number of buildings in New York State, are not left behind. And also to develop the workforce for today and for the future to build knowledge, skills, and career pathways to ensure that we have the workforce needed to actually do all of this electrification work, which is where all of you come in. We need you to install heat pumps. We need you to be a part of the electrification revolution. Thank you. And now I'll turn it over to Steve Calter from Con Ed to talk with us about the clean heating and cooling uh, incentives for heat pumps. To you, Steve. Um, I'm Steve Coulter. I'm a clean heat uh, program manager with Con Edison. And my role is um, I, I, impl I implement uh, Con Edison's heat pump incentive offerings. Uh, throughout our service territory in New York City and uh, Westchester County. And I also coordinate with the other utilities and with NYSERDA in, in delivering um, these through uh, a process, um, a set of requirements and, and program criteria uh, that's standard across the state uh, through the New York State uh, Clean Heat Program. Um, so you'll see as I kind of walk through um, the um, some of the clean heat program incentive offerings to the utilities, uh, particularly uh, ground heat pumps um, on the you know geo topic here. Um, even while the uh, the uh, individual incentive uh, levels uh, you know differ uh, between uh, it, with some categories uh, between the, the utilities, the the process of uh, becoming a participating contractor uh, with this program. Um, the process of applying for those incentives um, and uh, and the kind of quality control, um, you know, uh, requirements that we have in place. Those are standard across the state uh, so that, hey, if you, you know, begin, uh, you know, uh, begin your work in, in, in the geothermal space in one part of the state with one utility and uh, you look to expand to another utility, you can expect that uh, the, you know, the program rules are going to be uh, you know, aligned um, across uh, across the state, uh, which is which is uh, I think critically critically helpful. Um, so uh, you know, I've I've also you know put uh, in my you know email um, contact here as well. So hey, if you have any follow up questions um, after this webinar, want to learn more about uh, the New York State Clean Heat Program, um, you can also reach out to me here. Um, and actually, I have another uh, uh, some other contact points at the end of my slides here. Um, about how you can get more information about becoming a participating contractor. Um, I, you know, want to echo Wendy's emphasis there on the, the, you know, the key reason we're here, um, you know, participating in this webinar. Thank you, John, is is to, uh, you know, um, uh, try and grow our pool of uh, participating contractors. Um, it is critical uh, to have your partnership in order to uh, deliver this program and 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 uh, and meet. Uh, meet all these targets that when uh, walk through. So um, just a couple on this slide here, a couple key points about you know how the incentives are delivered through the electric utilities, which which I think is important. Uh, you know, at a very high level. Um, again, uh, Central Hudson, Con Edison, National Grid, NYSEG, RGE, and Orange and Rockland are all working together 
um, to offer these incentives uh, statewide in a you know in a uniform way. Um, eligible heat pump equipment um, includes air source heat pumps for space heating applications, ground source heat pumps uh, for space and water heating applications, heat pump water heaters for domestic and service water heating applications. Uh, systems may be installed in either existing buildings uh, and new construction. And the program is set up with there's nine program categories which reflect applicable technology types, uh, system size, incentive structure. Um, and, uh, you know, today really want to focus on that category three ground source heat pump, uh, which is the, you know, the geothermal heat pumps uh, that uh, you'll hear some, some more from one of the contractors um, from their perspective today. Um, incentive applications for our prescriptive categories, which is most of the projects currently, um, such as uh, ground source heat pumps, are submitted after the installation is complete. And uh, the total incentive uh, for, uh, you know, set for those, um, you know, installations are paid directly to the contractor. Um, and the program also includes a participating contractor award, uh, which I want to, you know, mention is $500 per project across each of the utilities for a category three ground source heat, pro uh, heat pump project. Um, and that's a, that's a reward that may be retained by the participating contractor. Then the balance of the total incentive is passed on to uh, the customer to reduce the cost um, of installing the equipment. So we are you know, incentivizing both the customers to you know, uh, reduce the cost of, of customers transitioning uh, for off of fossil fuel heating onto uh, you know clean electric heating, we're also trying to grow this market and reward you know contractors for uh, you know for taking on the work and the commitment to any investment to you know get into this space um, and get the training and uh, and uh, and help us deliver this program. Uh, so Ron, if you want to um, you know move on to the next slide here. Um, this is, uh, I think, the slide that that you will all be interested in. Um, the uh, what are the incentive offerings that the utilities um, uh, have? And um, um, I'm I'm not seeing the next slide on my screen yet. Maybe you are. Uh, we have it. Up. We have it up. Hopefully, everybody else can see it because I can see it. And I, sure. so okay. Sure excellent. Understand. Excellent. It's just law okay, mine. So just check there. That's great. Excellent. No worries. So. Yeah, so uh, you'll see here a, a table. Now there are, as I said, there's nine different categories um, within this program. Kind of a large table. I wanted to focus here on, uh, you know, our kind of you know prescriptive categories, uh, which are the most common for like a residential project. Um, category three, ground source uh, heat pumps for full load heating. Um, you know that that incentive is offered based on uh, the you know full load heating capacity. Uh, for the installation uh, on a dollar per 10,000 BTU H of heating. Um, and that's, you know, just under a ton. Um, and so, so you see the incentive levels here, Central Hudson offering a $2,000 incentive, Con Edison, $5,000 incentive, uh, $1,500 each for a national grid and nice second rg and &E, and a $2,000 incentive in Orange and Rockland territory. Again, the incentive amounts uh, do you know do vary by utility based on the utility um, you know budgets and, and targets that are managed by each utility but again it's a, a uniform program uh, in providing these offerings key point I want to make here uh, which you can see from the chart um, you know if there's any contractors you know here who are you know already working in the air source heat pump space um, you know those those uh, incentives, um, you know, are, are higher across the board for utilities with the ground source heat pump. That's reflective, of course, of, hey, these are more, you know, more, uh, you know, kind of expensive projects to, to install. There's more work involved. You have to drill. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, so that's the reason for that. But, you know, an important point here as well, um, category one and two, the, these are the incentive rates uh, that are currently um, available uh, for each of these categories. Uh, through February, uh, four projects in installed by February 28th, 2022. I will make a point, I will you make a note here, and, and there's a link in the footnotes here um, to this update online. Uh, effective March 1st, uh, 2022, Con Edison, Orange Rockland, and Central Hudson 
uh, are changing the uh, category one and two uh, incentive levels within their service territories, uh, with one exception of a new um, uh, incentive for uh, from Central Hudson for uh, uh, full load heating air source heat pump with integrated controls, which is a, a new offering. Uh, the other ones are being uh, are being reduced as utilities are managing their budgets in response to where there's been a lot of you know uptick in activity. Uh, in the market in those areas, uh, those those changes are not impacting ground source heat pumps. So a key point here that if you're if you're thinking about you know uh, uh, you know growing or getting into the geothermal space, uh, there are you know there are are you know uh, you know strong in, in, uh, opportunities here with these incentives. Um, I will also you know note just on the point of of a business opportunity. Um, again, we are looking to continue to grow our pool of our network of uh, participating contractors to help deliver this program. I know in Con Edison Service Territory, we have about a dozen or so uh, ground source heat pump uh, participating contractors active in our service territory, uh, and there's well over a hundred. You know, you know, if you're looking to you know add geothermal uh, to your business at this time, you know. You'll be on the cutting cutting edge, um, and, and again, uh, we're we're trying to ensure that that's going to grow. Uh, but right now, um, that's that's the state of that. When you look at kind of what is my competition, there, there's fewer you know options for customers as they look for contractors um, there. Um, I will just add a, a little plug. Uh, our, in Con Edison in Westchester County, uh, if you do work there, we do offer a 30% uh, Westchester gas moratorium kicker. Um, in uh, in certain areas in Westchester County that are gas constrained, um, that's on top of uh, the incentives shown in this chart. So if you're active there, that might be something you want to follow up with us about, learn more. Um, and on the slide here, um, you know, before we pass it off, uh, I just wanted to provide, uh, you know, uh, about you know how do you become a participating contractor in the program. Uh, you know, in order to take advantage of this program and, and, and apply for these incentives, uh, we require that ground, ground source heat pump installers, designers, and drillers must first become, uh, you know, clean heat participating contractors. Um, so you can take a look at the resources here uh, or call uh, that 1-800 number uh, for enrollment related in, uh, inquiries. Visit our clean heat become a participating contractor enrollment page uh, to get more information about about the program, what's involved, what are the requirements for being a participating contractor? Um, I think it's a good a good opportunity there um, on the point of you know how do I become a successful geothermal uh, contractor? Uh, become a you know New York State Clean Heat participating contractor. Um, so uh, I think that that's what I have here, and I'll I'll pass it off, uh, pass it back to Ron for. I'm happy to take any questions at the end. There will be question and answer at the end. We'll also have a list of all the contacts and their emails at the end of the presentation as well. So not to worry if you miss contact info, we're gonna have a summary sheet at the end. And with that, we'd like to introduce and bring on Mike and Maggie Seidenberg. And welcome guys, thank you so much for coming. If you would, please, uh, Mike, tell us about your company and your history with geothermal. Hi, this is Mike Seidenberg, and I'm sorry I'm not nearly as well versed as all these Zoom meetings as everyone else. But um, so my company, I started back in 2008. Um, I went to Oklahoma. I learned how to do geothermal. I came back and told my boss, hey, look at what we're doing. And he said, no, we're not. That's a terrible idea. I called my wife. She picked me up and I started my business. So from there... I've been doing geothermal yeah, since 2008. Climate Master has been awesome about supporting me all the way through, um, right up until my, my rep was in the ditch with me the very first job I did. Going through my notes. And that's about it. Uh, I don't know what else to say right now, I'm sorry. That's okay, Mike. You've been doing it for uh, for since 2008, and obviously you've been growing, you've been successful. I think you just bought another business or two, if I'm not mistaken, right? So I did. Pretty impressive. Yeah. 
Great. So if you would, could you could you walk folks through your sales process, what it's like to, to how do you approach customers? How do you get them involved and how do you get them convinced to do this? Well, they almost all contact me. I don't reach out to them. They don't really have to advertise that much. They come to me. Uh, we get a lot of referrals through the state. We get a lot of referrals through local um, environmental groups and such. And so then when I go to the customer's house, they're already interested in geothermal or at least air source heat pumps or heat pump technology. So then when we go there, we get we interview the customer, find out what resources they have available. And then I schedule them for an energy audit. And during the energy audit, we collect all the data for the heat loss calculation. After that, we have a couple appointments to review the heat loss calculation, to look at the available incentives, Everything is set before we go to the customer's house so that by the time we go to do the sale, the customer has had many contacts with us and we already have rapport. So it makes our closing ratio just astronomical. So, and I so sort of spent you... Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Maggie, please. I was going to ask you about the audit process and how does that work and if you guys charge for that, et cetera. Yeah, of course. So, uh... We've been very fortunate to be able to work with NYSERDA for, I'm not sure how long my dad's been doing it, but definitely the entire time I've been working. Um, but thanks to the subsidy funding that they have for the low income, we are in Rochester and the connections that we've made over the years, we've been able to go down to the city where some of the houses are very much old Victorians with no insulation, probably have nothing in the walls. And it's a unique opportunity because we can give them a chance to look at it in depth in a way that they would never be able to do or purchase on their own. And so more than anything, it's been backed before we even got into it. And being able to go into a customer's house, we have enough information and actual statistics to be able to show them have information of what they are qualified for what the state has told them or whatever they have good literature available for consumers about how to schedule an energy audit through participating contractors so when i get there they know that it's usually a no cost kind of thing so they're very honest and upfront with me about all the issues that they have about what rooms they catch a draft and stuff like that so usually more than anything, we're finding that people are excited when we come because of the way that it's set up and because they have less stress when we walk into the house because they know they don't have to pay for it. Um, they're very honest and it builds a, a good environment to sell on, I guess, because you're showing them that you care about not only their project, but their home, their comfort, everything that makes it up. And so it's kind of like a full body investment when we enter a house. One question is, um, so it seems like you guys do this energy audit, you do a manual J load calculation, and do you also use a, a software to model their house and figure out what their existing usage is and then how that's going to compare to the new system and how much that's going to save them? Or how do you do that? So the manual J in and of itself is a tool for measuring how to heat and cool the home adequately in terms of ETUs. We look at the home's thermodynamic and mechanical makeup, and that's what the energy audit is, is essentially we come in, we look at how your systems are performing. We look at any safety issues that they might be pouring into your home. They have been going unnoticed. But a big part of the reason that the manual J is becoming more of common knowledge and uh, I guess workplace talk is because in heat pump systems, it's essential because we're looking at efficiently how to put enough BTUs into the home that will be recovered and or used specifically for heating so that we can minimize the energy wasted. And when you look at it, there's a lot of things that it's, I guess if you put it in a consumer way, it's always been the easiest way to say it. But when you stand by a window and it's cold, you're heating that cold air. So the more times that you find yourself in a leaky space and the worse that the home has been insulated over the years, it becomes more of a full body project, which is why the manual J comes in to help. It takes into account how much your house is leaking, how much air moves in and out so that we can come up with an accurate number of how much we need to seal and heat the house. And then with Climate Master specifically and something that my dad showed me that I don't think 
almost anywhere has, is that they have a ground loop design software, which is actually incredible. It comes out with a very professional report that's super easy to understand. So when my dad does these, when he sits down for the sales process and he gets to actually sit with the customer and explain it, we have something that's both professional and very technical on our side, but in a consumer manner that they can understand. So they see how much work goes into it. They understand like this is what we're asking them to give up in terms of time and resources. Like you have to give up your ground for a little bit. You're not going to be able to garden for a week, but um, it gives them the ability unlike ever before to actually see the process that we have in a way that's technical, that shows them all the things that we're taking into account and actually gives them a good estimate of why it takes so long for us to get them a solid number or solid answers because we're trying to make sure that the system is as efficient and properly sized. So when you guys are, are, are you know, well, we have on, on this webinar now, we have contractors who want to get into this business who are selling either traditional fossil fuel heating systems or potentially air source heating systems, um, air source heating and cooling. What are the kind of the, some of the advantages that you're putting forth to the consumer about geothermal? And um, what are the kind of trainings do you, does a contractor need to be able to sell this and to understand it and implement it effectively? Well, as far as the incentives, when it comes to the training, NYSERDA actually has a nice incentive program through the Department of Labor. So they, they cover a portion of the cost for training a new employee into this. Um, between 50 and 75%, depending on where the person came from. So in reality, you're kind of getting very cheap labor, but you get to train people ac accurately and you can really put some money into training them because it's so incentivized. Um, yeah, what did I miss? Another, so, thing what that, another thing that we've noticed is with the training um, and every job, it's important you need to have the auditor who either needs the BPI or building analyst or BPI energy auditor certification. And then honestly, the amount of training in weeks that my dad has spent away in different places to be able to learn enough to do this is kind of tough sometimes when you think about it. But I think what he's learned and what both Climate Master and NYSERDA sort are of making more and more available to contractors, especially because there's a big push. Um, they're giving you those resources and they're letting you know upfront what you should have, what you need to know. And when you go to the training courses, they're very well designed to be very technical towards what is actually applicable. And so, so when you go in for training, it's not as much of a HVAC basics of geothermal. It's much more of a, this is how you need to approach a home. This is how you get the right information. This is how you know how to talk to other people about it. So in terms of the certifications, Mike, what are the certifications that contractors need to think about and to plan to get and how long should they plan that it's gonna take them to put this together to be able to roll out a product? Well, so you need to be certified through ICSPA in order to qualify for the incentives to get for the part of the New York Clean Heat. ICSPA, International Ground Source Heat Pump Association. Then other than that, obviously the insurance requirements and there's a big long process which i believe steve went through with the link to how to become a clean heat participating contractor it's really not that bad um but it does it is very specific you have to have this this and this otherwise there isn't much other certifications you really need so from the time that someone says, yeah, you know, I'm an, I got an HVAC business, I want to start doing ground source to the time that they actually can start selling three months, you think, or how long a time period, uh, what sort of, you know. I, I would think you could do it much less than that. I, I would say month or two if you were aggressive. Okay, great. Thank you. Jordan. Depends on if it's heating season. Yes, indeed, of course, the amount of time that you can devote to any particular topic, right? So absolutely. So, all right. So when you're closing a deal with a customer, um, just so first you're doing the audit, you're having some communication back and forth about their existing costs and their existing heating systems. You're looking at what are the efficiency opportunities to tighten up the home. So that's kind of potentially an upsell, I guess. Are there other upsell opportunities when you're doing the geothermal sales cycle? 
Oh yeah, lots. Um, for one thing, we definitely want to address the house as a whole for insulation. Insulation, air sealing especially, to reduce the volume of heat needed to be produced. So I would say probably 90% of the time, we're not just selling a ground source or an air source. We are selling insulation, air sealing, and the whole house approach. So the sales process is very easy at that point because we have addressed all of their issues at once rather than this, than this. It also really cuts down on the customers being upset after the sale because we didn't address all these other things. Um, then there's other opportunities for humidity control. Uh, like for instance, the Climate Master Trilogy actually is a, you can set it for dehumidification already too. So you have a humidifier and then you have a dehumidifier, which reduces the load a lot in cooling. So when you're approaching the sale, you're really looking at it as a whole house solution. And are you doing all that work yourself? Or are you, do you have partnerships, subcontractors? How do you wind up doing all this additional work? Man? I'm able to do all of it now. I have 15 guys on the road now, but those guys are always busy. So in the peak months like now, I do wind up using some subcontractors for the insulation and such. Cool. And um, so you actually do the whole nine yards. You've built now a substantial practice. Your business has expanded to include insulation and all the air sealing, uh, as well as you bring in Maggie for the energy audits. And um, how about hot water? What do you guys do with the hot water? And is there a backup heat requirement? I always try to include availability of backup heat because I'm pessimistic and I believe that everything is going to break someday. So it's nice to have two sources of heat, which makes the customer happy when it does break and at least they're not without service. We do hot water on almost every job. Um, we typically go with the heat pump water heaters in addition to the regular ground source, unless we're doing a trilogy where it's built in. Cool. So um, what additional equipment do, uh, do geothermal installers really need to think about having to make their practice successful? Well, if you don't want to buy your own excavator, which I have one, but so you, it, somebody needs to dig it. I usually subcontract that. And then um, if I have the availability, we dig it ourselves. You need a fusion tool, which is not that expensive. I think it's 1200 bucks up front. I bought mine in 1997 or so, and I still have it, still works perfectly fine. There's a flush cart that you need. Uh, they are now commercially available. When I started, they didn't have them on the shelf. I had to build one, but I still have the original one. And other than the equipment for doing energy audits and heat loss calculations, which isn't that much stuff either, that's it. You also need someone who's willing to stand in a ditch. <laughs> so how about when you're doing vertical wells as opposed to horizontal because in certain areas in new york state and certain homeowners they have strained uh, areas they can't do a field a loop they can't do a, a loop into a pond if they don't have one they have to do just basically vertical wells how challenging is that and what do you guys do about that aspect that's actually the easiest because you just hire a well driller that knows what he's doing um, I don't have a well drilling rig. I used to have a horizontal drilling rig, but I don't have one anymore. So Another big thing is that. Good one. Sorry. Another thing is that part of the auditing process is when we're looking at a geothermal system, we try to get either from the customer themselves or helping the customer get it from wherever they're located municipality wise. We need information about their like water table, ground, everything like that. Usually um, with the driller, if they're nice and you talk to them sweetly, they will also do a water test for you because that's another thing that you need to look at just in case. Um, because sometimes when you break into a vertical well, if you're not looking at the water table, it gives you a lot of issues. I know that's happened once. <laughs> So uh, one question is, um, as you guys are doing this, what's the sort of time of, from the time you're first contacted by a customer to the time you close a deal, and then how long until the installation is complete? About? Uh, six to eight weeks is what we set for an expectation. Yeah. 
of closing or of the whole thing, the whole process? Uh, no, two weeks for closing and then installation six to eight. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And in terms of comparing this to an air source heat pump installation, where a lot of guys already have that experience and know, and it's kind of simpler and easier, um, what are the upsides? What are the challenges? Obviously, it's a bigger sale, so I would imagine there's bigger margins. Is that all true? And how do you guys look at that? Well, the margins are definitely much better. Um, and I, I do a lot of air source heat pumps as well, but the geothermal side compared to an air source heat pump, I'd say geo is an actual easier install. It takes, it's more labor intensive, but it is, once you get into the house with whatever piping and however you're going to do it, it's like putting in an air handler. That's it. And do you, do you promote any particular aspects of the benefits of geo over, over air source? And what, what would you say about those um, benefits? One thing through finding all the information on AHRI and all the equipment that we've used, um, like side by side, when I go to a customer, if they're looking at what the actual values are, almost every time our highest efficiency air source heat pumps will meet the lowest efficiency of what we can offer at ground source. So if we're looking at it from a very energy savings perspective or climate impact, it's a lot more of an upsell and it's a lot easier to sell the customer because we can provide them data with actual, like the AHRI certificate with the SEER, HSPF and ER numbers so that they can actually see the benefits and how one is much more efficient than the other, what kind of savings that'll look at over the lifetime of each products. Yeah, and uh, you know, as uh, we've stated a couple of times in previous uh, webinars, the great thing about geothermal is you put it in, all the equipment is basically inside except for the ground loop. Ground loop is warrantied uh, for like 50 years, is that right, Mike? Actually, I think it's 100. I yeah, could be wrong. A, I'm not gonna be here time, then. Right? So. <laughs> yeah, whereas when you install an air source, it's most efficient on the day you install it, and then it's deteriorating because it's outside being subject to weather and everything yeah. else. I've never um, had to repair a ground loop. Oh, fascinating. Are there any um, additional license requirements that municipalities impose or the state imposes? Not here in upstate. Different counties have different rules. But myself, I don't have to have any sort of license for Monroe County. Okay, interesting. So it depends on the municipality or what their particular requirements are. And then on insurance, so you mentioned insurance before, what are the challenges there or what do people need to think about? Well, if you're going to dig yourself, your insurance company wants to know about it. Um, because once you do it underground, you have to call 811 before every job, but that's usually, you know, the stakeout and all that stuff is done by the digging contractor. Um, but when I do have to dig it myself, I have to call my insurance company, let them know I'm digging another job. It's not that much more expensive. It is a little, um, you know, it might cost me an extra hundred or 200 bucks a job. Cool. And then what are the sort of warranties on the equipment and do you guys offer warranties on the installation? So obviously all labor is, warranted for one year that's a requirement of NYSERDA or of, of any of the any of the people involved in this or the utility companies then we have um climate master provides a 10-year full part warranty and that's it what i usually do with customers is as long as i maintain it every year i continue a labor warranty in addition to the manufacturer warranty as long as they maintain every year so if climate, kind of, you know, if the manufacturer will cover it, the part I'll cover the labor. That's where we are. Ah, oh, great. And then, do you offer maintenance contracts? And what are those? Look? Actually, yeah, they're standard as part of my deal. Um, we start with a one-year maintenance contract right from the beginning contract, right as part of it, and then it's renewable on a monthly and/or annual basis, depending on how the customer wants to pay it. But we care, I try to keep that carried out right through the 10 years. 
Great, outstanding. So you keep a yeah. You know, when you're entering into an agreement with somebody, you've got a ten-year equipment warranty, but then you also get a maintenance contract out of it as well. Huh? Nice. Um, and then um, let's see. We've got a couple questions about uh, the heat pump water heaters that go along with the ground source, and um, I think there's additional incentives if you do that, right? Yes, there is an extra yes. bonus for implementing like the trilogy where it has the heat pump water heater built in. So there's an extra rider for that. There's an extra rider for doing both at the same time, even if they're separate. So say you don't go with a trilogy, you go with a you know two stage variable speed, and then you do a heat pump water heater on the side that there is a bonus from the utilities. I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with the, the downstate incentives, but I know in the Rochester area, Maggie even knows it. Maggie? Sorry, I'm sorry. Difficulties. Um, okay, no worries. Um, sorry, you, your like... screen just took over a bunch of screens and so I couldn't see anything. Um, but I believe in our county, I think it's 500 for a heat pump water heater. And then okay. a thousand for a D super heater. Seven. Can double check it. Give me two seconds. Yeah, and then um, Steve and Wendy, um, folks, if you would put your questions, additional questions, keep them coming into the chat or into the Q and A. Um, Steve and Wendy, if you can come back, we got a couple of questions for you. And Steve, actually, that heat pump water heater one in the Con Ed territory, I think you have a, as you always, since you are uh, the biggest utility in the state, I think you have the biggest incentive there, don't you, for those heat pump water heaters too. Yeah, thousand dollar incentive for the for the heat pump water heater, and then you know a, across all the utilities, the um, Mike mentioned the the additional bonus um, by combining space heating and water heating. It's a two hundred fifty dollar bonus, and and that applies by the way whether you're doing an air source heat pump, uh, you know, with with a with a heat pump water heater, you know, or a ground source heat pump. If, if you're combined, we're rewarding you know customers with that incentive, and, and if we're if you're uh, you know uh, combining the space heating and the, uh, and, and the water heating, um, you know, either, either way you're, you're doing it. Great. And then Wendy, in terms of the state support to get training, to be able for a contractor to break into this, um, what's the best way for someone to take a look at that and how to make that happen? I would say there are two avenues to take. One is if the contractor themselves and or the employees or the, the members of that uh, contracting firm uh, are interested in installing heat pumps. Um, as, uh, as was referred to earlier, uh, the international ground source heat pump installation training is required. And that is offered through the International Ground Source Heat Pump Association, so ICHPA. And they offer those uh, both in person and I believe online multiple times through the year. So it, it is it is almost always available. And I would encourage folks uh, to take a look at the that website um, in order to be able to, to, to install heat pumps. If additional training is offered through NYSERDA for um, additional quality, uh, for um, you know, tools and tips for best practices, those sorts of trainings happen kind of ad hoc. And uh, those are listed on the uh, NYSERDA website as they come out. Um, we also do, um, both the utilities and NYSERDA, when a training associated with heat pumps uh, is being presented, we do send out an email, a notification to all of the participating contractors in the New York State Clean Heat Program. So you, you would automatically get notified of any trainings. Um, and then a third area of, I'd say, more workforce development. Uh, if you are looking to bring on employees, uh, NYSERDA does have funding. Uh, you can look on the website under workforce development. Uh, there is funding for um, on-the-job training for interns, uh, for career pathways, for, for other, there are, there are many different programs uh, for support of your particular business in order to build and train within your business. Wonderful, thank you very much. And in terms of becoming a, uh, a statewide clean heat contractor, there's a specific uh, form, I think, right, that people have to fill out and go through in a process. And I don't think it's that long, but how long should people expect that that, uh, that certification is gonna take? 
I'm not sure, Steve, maybe you could answer that question. You're maybe a little closer to it than I am. I could take a stab at it. But... If we've lost Steve, I'll, I'll be happy to go ahead. Um, the, the process itself, there is, uh, I believe at the end of Steve's um, presentation, he had the website there. Uh, or if you Google New York State Clean Heat participating contractor or become a contractor, a link will, will come up for you. Um, within there, uh, you um, fill out a request to become a participating contractor. You check which utility you're interested in, um, what, what territory you're, you'll be working in. Um, and uh, the, the application goes in. Um, so you fill that out and you also fill out a, a participation agreement uh, with that utility because you'll be switching funds back and forth uh, with the, with the um, incentive payments. And so the utility will want um, certificate of insurance uh, and, uh, and to sign terms and conditions. So it's, it's those couple pieces of, uh, of documentation required. Maybe a week, sure. I don't think it's that long. Yeah, I, I've actually worked a few contractors through it, and it's really okay. not too bad a process. I mean, if you're in business, you already got most of the documentation that you right. need. If you don't have the, uh, the geothermal certification, that's where the sticking point might become. So you need to put that into your, into your hopper as part of your plan to make this happen. We have a question. Um, future expansion of heat pumps will greatly depend on more techs being attracted into the industry. Contractors are so busy with traditional business with limited workforce, they cannot expand their business models. How will this be accomplished? Well, isn't that the question of the day? Mm -hmm. We do struggle with that question. And especially now when it's, you know, there are, there's high unemployment, yet we hear contractors are desperate for, for stable workforce. Like, where, where is the mismatch here? So uh, my cert is doing quite a bit of work. We, we're just embarking on a, a, jobs, um, a job study to actually find out what those gaps are. Uh, our workforce development team is, is open to ideas uh, for how NYSERDA can help with that. Um, but uh, I would say in general, we're looking to um, really, what is it that we can do to attract um, various populations too. I mean, if you look at uh, the, the, the Climate Act, 35% of the benefits of the Climate Act need to, the benefit needs to, uh, to, to exist in the disadvantaged communities. And so the disadvantaged communities, priority populations, uh, veterans populations, there is a lot of funding uh, to support those, um, those populations into, into the workforce. Um, so those right now are where the most lucrative opportunities are for assistance in funding to grow your business. Outstanding, thank you. Um, so one of the things, Wendy, is as, uh, as folks are looking ahead, um, you know, right now we have all these incentives, but it seems pretty clear that over time, if New York State are gonna make these calls, we're gonna have to change codes, we're going to have to start implementing, like New York City has, um, some penalties if people don't hit their greenhouse gas goals. How do you see that evolving over what sort of time period? Most of that work is being addressed through the Climate Action Council. So the Act was uh, the Climate Action Act. The Climate um, Act was was put into place, and now it's like, okay, how how are we going to meet all of these goals? What do we need? What infrastructure and um, programs need to be put into place? So a lot of that is playing out in the Climate Action Council. Again, if you Google Climate Action Council, you get all of the proceedings happening there. But the way that we're looking at it is right now we have the carrot out there. We have the incentives, uh, we're doing the marketing, we're trying to get the awareness, we're trying to promote the benefits of heat pumps, we're doing what we can to, part to, to support the contractors to install heat pumps. So I say we're in the carrot phase. Pretty soon, as you just mentioned, we will be in the stick phase because we have to hit these goals in order for to to, to uh, you know well need I say the whole situation that we're in. Um, so um, there are there 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 the, the the area that we are looking at first, and the Climate Action Council is promoting first, is within new construction, and looking at a time frame or a date in which new buildings going in will not be able to, uh, the proposal is for, for no fossil fuel for, uh, for new construction. And that is probably the first place that we will see this begin to play out uh, with respect to regulations. So yep. what I 
believe is the case. And um, you know, a lot of folks chime in, and then we're going to have a quick wrap up. But but the reality is, is that anybody who's getting into this now is going to be ahead of the game. Eventually, everyone is going to have to be in this. If you establish yourself as a geothermal heating and cooling expert and provider, you're going to be way ahead of everybody else when they start to need to move forward into this area. The whole state, the whole country, the whole world is really moving in this direction. So it's a leadership profession. It's a leadership position. It's also a market share position where you get your name out there and start being able to do those. And I think um, there's also some uh, co-op money available to contractors, right, to be able to market this, if I'm not yes. mistaken, Wendy? That is correct. Right. Yes, we do a 50-50 cost share for um, for advertising and training. Yep. All right. So it's an excellent piece that's also there, guys. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So let's close it up. Um, Wendy, last uh, sort of one minute, quick Quick summary of any points you want to summarize and make, please. There is nothing that is more important right now than building electrification. We have a lot of money. The state is behind it. Our effort is there. Our support is there. So if you have any questions about it, if you're even just inkling thinking about it, please contact me, contact Steve. We'll get you set uh, and on the path for electrification. Outstanding. Steve? Um, yeah, just echo a little bit of the discussion that you and Wendy were saying about, you know, the timing and, and when do we start to move from a place where we have these incentives available uh, for customers versus in the future there's penalties and things for customers, right? I mean, uh, we're looking at that right now, particularly with large customers with Local Law 97, which you brought up, Ron. I mean, just a plug there, that is, that's, that's a conversation we're having with, with our, you know, large customers right now. Um, you know, also participate in this clean heat program that, hey, you know, going, uh, you know, electrification of their building heating is really a key way to, you know, avoid those future local law 97, you know, penalties, uh, because, you know, the concept being that, hey, you know, once the, you know, as we move towards a more renewable electric system, you know, electric just, uh, grid, right, um, you know, being able to pull from that grid, uh, you know, that's going to be, you know, um, you know, count it as, as benefit to your own building, you know, emission. And and also just the point of, um, you know, uh, yeah, again, kind of being ahead of, um, well, you know, there's another just, I, I lost it now. There's another thing I had from the last thing you said, but I mean, the, you know, there's, there's some opportunities now to, to kind of take advantage of, of these of these incentives and things now. Um, you know, the other piece is that I heard Mike say several times, I'm going to customers and as sales is kind of easy because customers are already, you know, interested in, in, uh, you know, ground source heat pump. Um, that's great to hear from the contractor because that's what the utilities and ICERTA and the clean heat program are also trying to do is market directly to the customers, make this easy and kind of customer friendly for them to know what these are, get interested. And then if you're on that participating contractor list and there's not a whole lot of, you know, there's going to be more and more years to come, but if, but if you're on it now, uh, you know, you're going to be getting phone calls from those, from those customers as well, interested and, and hopefully, you know, that makes the sales process easier for you. And, and we'd like to hear that. Excellent. Mike and Maggie. Yes, sir. Last so statement, last honestly, summary points. I honestly think that now of any time is like the best time to get involved with this. I've seen how much he's grown and that's just been as it's been developing and he hasn't even had the opportunity to really reap the benefits of what the programs have now. But I think for the first time, HVAC seeing a much more professional, scientific-based approach to households and household energy, and that's creating huge impacts and actual measurable success. And so I think it's a huge opportunity and not only to promote yourself and your business in terms of HVAC, but also proving that you're an educated and well-assessed building performance analyst and you know how to approach a home and you can give people opportunities that a lot of other people couldn't get. Excellent. Mike? See why I let her do the talking? <laughs> Any last thing you want to say, Mike, to those other contractors that are uh, listening in on this at this point? Uh, the only other part was when they were talking about the workforce development 
uh, it is really good because the Department of Labor does actually ship me some people. They will send me over resumes of people, especially uh, newly separated veterans. We get a lot of those. Uh, I'm a vet, so I tend to lean towards hiring veterans as much as I can. And if we train them for heat pumps, they'll, they'll pay 75%. Pretty incredible, right? So, excellent. Well, folks, thank you very much. We're at the end of the hour. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for your questions. Um, really appreciate it. I'm going to put up again the contact information for everybody. Um, so, Wendy McPherson of NYSERDA, Steve Coulter of Con Ed, representing the utilities, Mike Seidenberg, Eco Energy, Maggie Seidenberg, e Energy Vanna, and everyone who came. Thank you very much. I just like to say this is that heating and cooling is about a third of the greenhouse gas piece. It's a massive amount of dollars that we're spending in New York State. Clearly, you guys are in that field. It makes total sense for you to focus on it. One of the tremendous opportunities that I see as a practitioner in clean energy for the last three decades is the kind of convergence of these technologies. So when you're doing now electrification of buildings with either ground or air source heat pumps, and you build in a clean energy system with solar and solar and battery storage, now what you have is also another package that you might think about partnerships and strategic relationships with solar providers who can both promote you and you can promote them and the both of you can have some synergies in the products that in particular on some of the projects I've been working on downstate and elsewhere, when you have solar providing the electricity for a ground source heat pump, heating, cooling, and hot water, you are able to offer the lowest cost electricity along with resiliency, along with the best price heating and cooling that's substantially cheaper than anything else on the market. And that is now away from volatility with the rising prices that we're seeing in fossil fuels and you're moving customers to the next level. So as you're looking at moving yourself forward, think about those synergies as well and those strategic partnerships that you might be able to take advantage of. Thank you very much, folks. Thank you all. Thanks, Climate Master, for sponsoring this. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for your participation. Um, contact any of the folks that are here and we'll See you. This will, will be recorded and available for you if uh, you want to share it with your friends and other providers. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Take care, all.